Hi and welcome back. So a new study looking into how we recover from stress, our resilience, can be used as a way to measure our biological age. And when added to DNA methylation clocks, is going to give us a far more accurate way to measure our real biological age. Enough waffling off me, let's jump into the presentation and see how this new measure of resilience is going to help us work out a more accurate number for our biological age. This is a review of a study conducted by a research team called Giro, a Singapore-based biotech company who, in collaboration with the Roswell Park Comprehensive Cancer Centre in Buffalo, New York, have presented a study in Nature Communications on the clear associations between aging and the loss of the ability to recover from stresses. And there are links in the description below to the studies and the articles I used to put this presentation together. Recently, scientists have reported the first promising examples of biological age reversal through experimental interventions. Indeed, many biological clock types properly predict more years of life for those who choose healthy lifestyles or quit unhealthy ones, such as a poor diet, smoking or lack of exercise. But still unknown is how quickly biological age is changing over time for that same individual and distinguishing between the transient fluctuations and the genuine bio age trend. This is the reason I have my blood test every three months and then use those tests to predict my biological age. Four times a year, in my humble opinion, as opposed to once, will give me far more reliable data. The team of experts in biology and biophysics presented results of a detailed analysis of dynamic properties and the fluctuations of physiological indices along individual aging trajectories. Healthy human subjects turned out to be very resilient, whereas the loss of resilience turned out to be related to chronic diseases and elevated all-cause mortality risks. The rate of recovery to baseline levels after stresses was found to deteriorate with age. Accordingly, the time needed to recover was getting longer and longer, around two weeks for a 40-year-old healthy adult and up to six weeks for an 80-year-old. Tim Perkov, first author and head of the M Health Project at Giro, said, Calculation of resilience based on physical activity data streams has been implemented in the GiroSense iPhone app and made available for the research community via web-based API. My comment here is let's hope this app comes out on Android very soon too. If the trend holds at later ages, the extrapolation shows a complete loss of human body resilience at around 120 to 150 years of age. The reduced resilience was observed in individuals not suffering from major chronic diseases. As we age, more time is required to recover from anxiety. And as a result, we spend less and less time close to our optimal physiological state. The predicted loss of resilience, even in the healthiest, most successfully aging individuals, might explain why we do not see an evidential increase of maximum lifespan, while the average lifespan has steadily grown over recent decades. Aging in humans is a complex, multi-stage process. It would therefore be difficult to compress the aging process into a single number, such as a biological age. Giro's work shows that longitudinal studies open a whole new window on the aging process and produce independent biomarkers of human aging, suitable for applications in neuroscience and future clinical trials on anti-aging interventions. Peter Fedichev, the co-founder and CEO of Giro, said, Aging in humans exhibits universal features common to complex systems operating on the brink of disintegration. This work is a demonstration of how concepts borrowed from physical sciences can be used in biology to probe different aspects of senescence and frailty to produce strong interventions against aging. No strong life extension is possible by preventing or curing diseases without interrupting the aging process, the root cause of the underlying loss of resilience. The team does not see any laws of nature 
prohibiting such an intervention. Therefore, the aging model presented in this study may guide the development of life-extending therapies with the strongest possible effects on human health span. Brian Kennedy, Professor of Biochemistry and Physiology at the National University of Singapore said, this work by the GIRO team shows that longitudinal studies provide novel possibilities for understanding the aging process and systematic identification of biomarkers of human aging in large biomedical data. The research will help to understand the limits of longevity and future anti-aging interventions. What's more important, the study may help to bridge the rising gap between the health and the lifespan, which continues to widen in most developing countries. Dr. David Sinclair, a Harvard Medical School professor of genetics said, the investigation shows that recovery rate is an important signature of aging that can guide the development of drugs to slow the process and extend health span. The authors characterized the dynamics of physiological parameters on timescales of human lifespan with a minimum set of two parameters. The first is an instant value often referred to as the biological age and is measured by the dynamic organism state index or DOSI. The quantity is associated with stresses, lifestyle and chronic diseases and can be computed from a standard blood test. The next parameter, the resilience, is the new and reflects the dynamic properties of the organism's state fluctuations. It informs how quickly the dosi value gets back to normal in response to stresses. Physiological parameters such as sugar levels and sleep time are naturally subject to fluctuations around the norm throughout the day. We can collect a longitudinal data set that's a series of measurements for the same person and observe that the average levels are different between individuals. Resilience also requires repeated measurements because we need to know exactly when recovery was achieved to calculate an individual's resilience. For the healthiest individuals, such an observation period would amount to several months and should increase with age. At present, the only practical way to achieve a high, that's once per day or better, sampling rate is to use a mobile wearable sensor. Population studies have shown that the number of individuals showing signs of the loss of resilience increases exponentially with age and doubles every eight years at a rate matching that of the Gompertz mortality law, which observed that all cause mortality rates double every eight years. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. My takeaway from this is the less psychological stress, the better. Now, that's easy to say. Uh, some people live and work in a stressful environment most of the time. So for them, stress, psychological stress is the norm. So how can you measure that stress and how can you do something about it? Uh, although it's a basic version, my uh, fitness tracker does have a stress monitor and it does give me four levels from relaxed to extreme stress. Uh, in a in a form of a pie chart and tells me when that when I hit that particular bracket at what time during the day I can then go back through it and I can check when I was in the red which is extreme stress nine times out of ten that extreme stress is when I'm driving those of you that have driven in the Emirates will know that driving especially on Sheikh Zayed Road at certain times during the day is extremely stressful um, I'd be interested to know of you what you thought of the presentation I'd also be interested to know how many people do have a stress element to their fitness tracker if they look at it and then what they do to try and counteract them going into extreme stress um, periods of time. Well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. I look forward to your comments. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. As always, please take care, stay safe, and I will see you soon. Bye for now.